Well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning, Holy Trinity Sunday. Uh, it kind of gives us all that little look in our eyes about, well, what is all that all about? And it's really one of the more difficult Sundays to grasp. And that's why we're really going to spend some time not only with the kids. It's, it's a hard one to explain, as you can imagine. But during the children's sermon, I'm going to try a little different approach. And then, of course, we'll be talking about it not only in the scriptures, but uh, also in my message today, too. Um, a couple of announcements before we uh, proceed with our worship service. Uh, please remember, Vacation Bible School is coming. It's about a week away, so I think you have an insert for that. Um, there's numbers there. There's uh, a website uh, or email addresses, so you can get a hold of uh, Becky Stoley. Uh, so please do that. They, they would just love to have, have the kids there. Um, the uh, informational meeting for a mission to, to uh, Tanzania went very well, so we're going to continue with that. And uh, on June 13th, which is a Wednesday, uh, you will find in your bulletin that we're having another meeting, and now we're starting to hone in a little bit, and we're starting to get a little more serious about individuals who would like to commit to a trip uh, to Tanzania. So that'll be our next round of discussion. If you weren't able to make it to the first one, uh, you're welcome to come to this one. And of course, they're op these, these meetings are open to everyone, so uh, anyone is welcome. But we're going to be starting to, to move a little bit, and then I suspect we'll probably have one more meeting in July, and that's when we're going to want to see, well, who is our group that's going to make this trip to Africa. So please uh, keep that in mind as you look through your bulletin. Uh, at the second service today, I'm, I'm sure you all know Charlie, right? Charlie Anderson, that's Pastor Cassie and uh, uh, Jacob's son. Well, he's going to be baptized at the second service, so um, we'll certainly keep his blessings and uh, his prayers uh, in our hearts. Also, uh, you'll, you'll notice that uh, the Calvary Relay Team is, uh, well, they're at it. Uh, there's a, a notice in here that uh, you're asked to attend the team's ham and egg breakfast fundraiser on Sunday, June 3rd. That's from 9 to 12. So I'm, it's a, a very good cause. I'm, I'm sure they would really appreciate um, your support for that. I think that is everything that I have. So with that, uh, if you would please stand, let's continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let's confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength through Jesus Christ. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we still were sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. We'll continue with our opening hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help save and defend us, O God. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal, three in one, and we praise your power, majestic, one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The first lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. A reading from Isaiah. <clears throat> in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the second lesson is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17, a reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that, vi that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Be to God. If I could ask the children to come forward, please.
Now if you could please stand for, is this, oh. I think I'm back. <laughs> okay. The gospel is from the third chapter of John, beginning with the first verse. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus. He was a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Well, Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born from having grown old? Born after having grown old. Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Well, Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Well, Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can these things be? Well, Jesus answered, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Well, very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. It's the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So today is Holy Trinity Sunday. So before I go any further, I'd like to begin with just kind of a common rule of thumb regarding this day. And that is, anybody who says, or if you know anybody who says that they understand everything there is to know about this day, is not to be trusted. What I mean is this, the Trinity, quite frankly, is more than just a little beyond our comprehension and our understanding. In fact, this issue of trying to explain the Trinity is one reason why we have readings from the Old Testament and the New Testament every Sunday. It's it's an attempt to understand the nature of God, like today. Isaiah, we read about God opening up the heavens, and then we see that his, this, just the hem of his robe fills the entire inside of the temple as God comes to call young Isaiah into the temple for a little one-on-one discussion, you know, with God. And then we have the Apostle Paul in the epistle, letter to the Roman church, speaking about the ever-present power of the Holy Spirit 
and the new life that it brings? Well, now there's two. Two of the three. We've got God and we've got the Spirit. And then, of course, we have our Gospel reading today where Jesus has this visit with Nicodemus, engaging him in a mysterious conversation about spirit and birth. So there it is. It's God the Father, the Creator, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. The Trinity, one God, three persons, and the thought of it stops us cold. Now, of course, we can always find just a little bit of comfort in knowing that we're not alone in this kind of stuff. I mean, there's others who have difficulties as well, many. I mean, just look at the two creeds. For example, most of the time, we read the shorter version of the creed. You know the Apostles' Creed? And that just lays out in kind of an abbreviated manner how faith, uh, in an abbreviated manner of how our faith is... is um, represented in the Trinity. But back in the 4th century, it was a real mess over the creeds. No one could agree on anything, nothing about the Trinity. So in an effort to protect the integrity of our confession in the creed, then they came up with the Nicene Creed. It was adopted. The difference is really obvious. The Nicene Creed is a full page in length, and a full page in length. The Apostles' Creed is a little more abbreviated than a, a couple simple paragraphs. They start out, I believe, and another paragraph that starts, I believe, and they're just short. But it's all in an effort to better, uh, better explain and to understand the Trinity. But that doesn't necessarily help us. The generations today, they have been... They have this waning interest in accepting either creed as they're written. And why? Well, think about it. God the Father, the Creator, that's okay. For most people, that's okay. I mean, we're beginning to appreciate the complexity of creation, the complexity of life, and that, and that both evolution and creation can coexist. So God the Father... Okay, but with Jesus. Now the problems begin. Jesus, the Son of God, well, now we have a virgin birth. When's the last time you've heard of one of those? Not possible, right? And we have someone who preaches all this stuff that the world finds completely ridiculous, you know, like all this talk about loving everybody and, and world peace. I mean, that's stuff that you only hear on Miss America pageants, right? Jesus, a human like you and me, oh, but also divine at the same time. Isn't that a little bit like mixing oil and water? You, I mean, you'd think so. Or maybe it's like gluing two boards together, you know, like this. This side is divine and this side is human. And you realize that that actually was a theory that was accepted back in those early times. But... How is it, then, that God dies on a cross? Did only half of this board die, or how did that work? And then this man, Jesus, as he's walking through the, walking through the walls of buildings, promising the Holy Spirit, I mean, whoa! How many? How, how many of our younger generation just, are just going to say thanks a lot for all of that? I mean, a thing we can't see, we can't explain, we can't understand, yet we are supposed to believe. I mean, really? I mean, this Holy Spirit is what will guide us through our life now that Jesus is gone and will assure a smooth transition into heaven. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Well, I think you can see that this day is not a day to even attempt a bunch of formal church doctrine because we still won't understand it. I mean, Jesus stood right in front of Nicodemus and he explained very clearly the significance of physical and spiritual birth 
And Nicodemus, who was a very well-educated man, still didn't get it. If you're someone who questions the concept of Trinity and you wish to leave the sanctuary today with anything at all, let me just offer up a couple simple examples, things that I kind of grab onto. They help me. Here's my first one. And this is the one I really like. We only know what we are humanly capable of knowing. I don't know how many of you ever thought of that statement before, but it's a real one. We are... We only know what we are humanly capable of knowing. We do not and will not ever know or understand everything. That sounds like a kind of a cop-out, but it's really not. Just look at the rainbow. In fact, I'm sure with our rain this morning, you might have a chance to go out there and actually take a look at it and think about this a bit. But in the rainbow, of course, you get red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, right? Red on one side, violet on the other, and then you don't see anything else. Does that mean there's nothing else? Well, we know there is. There's infrared, there's ultraviolet, and other frequencies. We just don't see them. Our brain just isn't wired to go there. And 75 years ago, scientists used, used to just marvel at how cells could multiply and divide. I mean, it obviously happened, but it was a mystery beyond mysteries. You can imagine sitting and watching something like that, knowing that it was happening. Yet today, well, the DNA in our cells is known to be the director of that entire process, and we have even gone so far as to map the, the human genome in its entirety. So that, going from the impossible and unknown to common knowledge in just a few short years. So it's not surprising. As we learn more about our properties of frequencies and resonances, well, now the concept of physical bodies taking on other forms and walking through a wall seems just a little bit less foreign. And where is the wind? Where's the wind? Who's the last person that actually saw wind? You can see the effect of the wind. Can't see the wind. Does that mean it's not there? Nope, it's there. So could it be such a ridiculous consequence? I mean, it's almost like God was kind of playing with us with this one, that, that God from the very beginning of creation described the wind in the same way he describes the Holy Spirit. Same word, same Hebrew word in the Bible. So we need to know our limitations, and we can't rely on our current state of knowledge to explain and comprehend everything. That attempt is only going to serve to confuse you and to mislead you. So today, if you leave the sanctuary with anything at all regarding the Trinity, maybe leaving with this example is the one that will stick in your mind. There's a a um, Christian theologian, St. Augustine, sometimes pronounced St. Augustine, 5th century, back when they were struggling with Trinity and all this stuff. This is what made it easy for him to understand. Augustine referred to God the Father as a lover, Jesus as the Beloved, and the Holy Spirit as the love that's shared between the two. Well, this thought of Augustine simplifies the relationship a little bit because we know how mysterious love can be. I mean, for 31 years, I've been telling my wife that I love her. I'm the lover. She's the beloved, and this mysterious thing that's been going on between us all this time, I could never explain it, but I know it's there. I mean, that place alone is kind of a great place to be free of complicated doctrine and confusing explanations because we know that God loves this world. And Jesus didn't come to judge the world, but he came to save this world. And this is the kind of love that is just beyond us. It's just beyond us. But it doesn't mean it's non-existent. God wants desperately to be in a relationship with all of us, and he's going to stop at absolutely nothing to accomplish that. 
I mean, this concept of love, well, it might be a simple concept, but it does kind of explain things. I mean, whether it's through Jesus or the Spirit, it's an all-out effort for God to remain in relationship with us. And that is what so much of the Bible is all about. The Bible wasn't intended to be a, you know, this know-all book. It was never intended to be completely understood. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of things as we can see them. Remember, we can't see beyond the color of violet or red. We just can't. Not going to happen. So don't let your faith in the Trinity be influenced by grandiose explanations or some simplistic questions or even the inability to understand. Because like so many things in our life, there are and always will be parts of earthly life that are just best left to mystery. Amen. Let's sing our hymn of the day. please stand if you're able let's join together and confess our faith with the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth Lasting. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place praying for the world that God so loves. Father, when we cry to you, your spirit bears witness with our spirit. Give to your church the confidence of the children of God so that we boldly share with everyone your world saving love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son. In these days, when nation condemns nation, save us 
Give us strength and fill us with your justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your people cry out to you, seeking the goodness and hope of your holiness. Let the wind of your spirit blow into the lives of all who suffer from injustice or want or anguish of any kind. Lord, in your mercy. In our, li- in our living and in our dying, we belong to you. Help us to never forget that through the gift of baptism, we are forever your blessed children. So on this day, we thank you for this gift that you offer Charlie and pray that he will find your eternal presence as a true blessing. Lord, in your mercy. And gracious Lord, on this memorial weekend, we give you thanks for all those who have served or are serving in our military. The sacrifices are great, and their love for this country is great. So bless them. Bring them comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, O God, we lift up our prayers in trust and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As members of God's household, I pray the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share the peace of the Lord. Continue with our morning offering.
Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. So open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. And open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. So do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this wine, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Heavenly Father, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. Our Lord's table has been prepared, and all are welcome. Please be seated.
If you'd please stand if you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace, and for you are the Lord forevermore. Amen. And now may God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. So let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.